Mirna Salihin died after drinking a Vietnamese iced coffee filled with cyanide inside a modern cafe in the capital of Indonesia. Probably the last place you will think to be the place of assassination. But that's the reason why this case gets so big and controversial. At first, nobody suspected it was all part of her ex-best friend's larger plan, but the evidence and proof say otherwise. The victim is Wayan Mirna Salihin. She has a twin sister, Sandy Salihin, and both were born on March 30, 1988 in Jakarta, Indonesia. Mirna had a happy childhood and realized her talent for design as a teenager. Mirna graduated from high school and enrolled in college in Australia in 2017. While the suspect, Jessica Kumalawongso, was also born in Jakarta on October 9, 1988. Jessica is the eldest child of her parents and had a peaceful and wealthy upbringing. She likes to draw and play computer games. As a result, Jessica opted to major in graphic design. Both Mirna and Jessica enrolled at Billy Blue College of Design in Sydney, Australia. Mirna rapidly made friends with other Indonesians, and Jessica Kumalawongso quickly became a close friend of her. Jessica had gotten citizenship in Australia before the end of college and had elected to stay, while Mirna and her other friends had returned to their homes in Indonesia. Mirna resolved to return to Australia in 2014 to reconnect with several of her college friends, including Jessica. Despite Mirna's impression that their friendship had evolved over the years, and even though they had only spoken by text and phones over the time, Mirna insisted that they go out to lunch. During lunch, Jessica talked about her new boyfriend and relationship troubles, and Mirna gave her some frank advice. Mirna is known for her upfront opinion and doesn't sugarcoat. With Mirna harsh advice, Jessica stand up and leave the reunion without saying anything. They then stop talking to one another. Jessica's relationship with her boyfriend ended a year after the restaurant altercation. In 2015, her emotional fragility increased as a result. Jessica even attempted suicide four times and had to spend time in the hospital receiving therapy for severe depression. Jessica became addicted to alcohol after leaving the hospital. She even got into a vehicle accident while drunk. Jessica also lost her job because of her excessive drinking and erratic behavior. The girl's irritation level escalated as she looked at her friend's life on social media. She see that Mirna Salihin was engaged to be married in addition to having great vocations and lovely appearance. Jessica found out about Mirna's marriage while searching through her profile pictures. Jessica was devastated since she was the only friend who had not received an invitation to Mirna's wedding. Jessica calls her family months later to notify them that she will be returning to Indonesia with the excuse that she wants to get better and forget her past in Australia. Then, Jessica contacted Mirna two days after her arrival to arrange a coffee meetup. Mirna, who doesn't suspect anything, was moderately intrigued. But her husband suggested she invite a third friend to make the encounter less awkward. The incident happened on the evening of January 6, 2016. Jessica Wongso invites Mirna Salihin and Hani to meet up at Olivier Cafe in Grand Indonesia Mall at around 5 p.m. A few hours before they met, Jessica asked Mirna and Hani in their WhatsApp group what drink that they want because she says that she will arrive first and buy it for them in advance. Mirna replied telling that she doesn't have to do that but Jessica insists. So without any doubt, they tell what they want. Mirna chose iced coffee and Hani chose a cocktail. At 3.30pm, Jessica is seen on CCTV already arriving at the Olivier Cafe. One and a half hour early then planned. She enters the cafe and was seen looking around the cafe CCTV. She then placed a booking on table number 54, which the table was purely seen by CCTV footage. Jessica then left the cafe, telling the staff of the cafe that she wanted to buy gift first for her friends. She is then again seen entering the cafe, holding three pieces of paper bag that contain soap as gift. When she sits at the table, she placed the three paper bag on top of the table, covering the CCTV view. When the drinks arrive, her hand was seen moving several times between the coffee and her bag. She then just sit there, waiting for Mirna and Honey. 
at around 5 p.m., Mirna arrived at Grand Indonesia Mall, delivered by her husband, Arif Sumarko. Mirna and Hani then entered the Olivier Cafe. When they met with Jessica, they greet and hug each other. Then they proceed to sit with Mirna at the center, Jessica on her left, and Hani on her right. Immediately after sitting, Mina reaches for the coffee in front of her and take a sip. Immediately, she says that the coffee tastes bad, saying, it's awful, it's bad. Just second after that, she starts showing uncomfort in her movement. She keeps moving her hand in front of her mouth and moving uncomfortably. Soon after, she collapses and her seat with foam coming out of her mouth. The cafe turns to panic and Mirna was rushed to the nearest clinic by the cafe staff right after. There, the doctor stated that Mirna's condition is normal. Seemed like she just fainted and was still alive. Then, at her husband's request, Mirna was transferred to Abdiwaluyo Hospital at about 6 p.m. When they arrive, she undergo normal patient checking and the doctor announced that she has passed away on transportation to the hospital. At first, the police had reached a dead end in the investigation of Mirna's death because Mirna's family refused to allow an autopsy to be performed on Mirna's body. However, after some thought and explanation from the police, the family agreed to let the police conduct an autopsy. The autopsy then revealed that Mirna's stomach was bleeding as a result of cyanide found inside her stomach. This founding shocked the police and the possibility of assassination rise. The police then launched an investigation, calling witnesses such as Mirna's family, represented by her father and two of Mirna's friends, Honey and Jessica. Jessica, who is being suspicious, was questioned by police five times. On January 10, 2016, Jessica's house was also searched. Police are known to be hunting for Jessica's gene at the time of the incident. However, the pants have yet to be discovered. On January 11, 2016, the police carried out a pre-reconstruction at the Olivier Cafe by presenting two of Mirna's friends, Honey and Jessica. The cops also approached an employee of Olivier Cafe for information. Customers and staff members at the cafe were drawn to Jessica's activity from the moment she walked in until she began accusing the establishment of altering Jessica's drink. After checking the security tape, the detective determined that Jessica did look suspicious. Her behavior during Mirna's bureau also drew eyebrows. She never stopped and at times she looked to be smiling. In addition to questioning witnesses, the police sought information from professionals such as IT experts, hypnotherapists, psychologists, and psychiatrists to bolster the evidence against the criminal. The Indonesian National Police also requested assistance from the Australian Federal Police in investigating Jessica's background while she was in Australia. And there, they found out even more about the bad record of Jessica Pass. Here, all the clue is pointing at Jessica. The authorities ultimately identified the culprits of Wayan Mirna Salihin's murder over months after her death. On January 30, 2016, Jessica Kumala Wongso was arrested and formally charged with the premeditated murder of Mirna Salihin. The five-month-long case broadcasted live and became a major national event. Jessica Wongso was found guilty on October 27, 2016 of murder under Article 340 of the Criminal Court after going through multiple trials. The prosecution alleged in his indictment that Jessica was suspected of poisoning Mirna with 5 grams of cyanide chemical. Jessica is claimed to have concealed her acts by placing three paper bags on table 54. Jessica Kumala Wongso was sentenced to 20 years in jail on October 27, 2016. As of now, Jessica is still serving 20 years in prison after killing her ex-best friend Mirna Salihin.